Howdy everyone on YouTube and across cyberspace. Thanks for tuning into the Movo TX channel of gear reviews today. And as you can probably guess today, we're looking at my new iPhone 5C that I've had for two weeks on a Verizon Wireless shared 2G two-year contract plan that I share with my wife and her iPhone, her older, my, I might say, iPhone 4S. So her 4S and my 5C are running the same 7.0.4 latest iOS uh, so, uh, software update that's the current one and um, I'm not going to go into a lengthy review about the phone um, simply because there's dozens of reviews out there about it already um, just go ahead and look at those guys reviews they're much more experienced than I am as a cell phone user and stuff like that so I've had cell phones for 15 years my wife has had her 4s for two and a half years on a Verizon 2G plan so I'm not new exactly to smartphones and how to manage your data and all that stuff but personally I thought it's time to take a step into what this decade or whatever and migrate over from my old uh, QWERTY keypad QWERTY keypad dumb phone so to speak and it's been a surprising learning curve to be honest with you um, it really has <sighs> so first of all you're buying into a cellular technology okay that is a big broader world than probably than I than I had expected okay so that's the first thing and you hear about apps everybody talks about apps everybody talks about downloading apps and using apps they're free but well Okay, yeah, it is like, okay, but what does that mean? Okay, well, for me, and the big shock, well, surprise, okay, has been the amount of learning curve it takes, okay, to get up to speed with data usage, okay? I'm not new to data usage, okay? I've been on Comcast for my internet provider, and they have a 280 gig ceiling, so to speak, for my billing period for data use um, online. But from the cellular standpoint, it's totally new. So this is the site that I use all the time. It's the My Verizon website. And if you're migrating over from a dumb phone or from um, like my wife's older 4S, you're going to want to get to know this very well. Because especially if you're on like a 2G or a 4G smaller plan and you can't afford to go over and incur overcharges. Okay, and that's the boat I'm in. Okay, more power to anybody with an unlimited data plan but that's that's not me okay so what I'd noticed about my 5c was even with the same exact cellular usage settings on the phone as my wife's 4s my 5c was using a lot more data cellular data around the clock nonstop 1 a.m. 105 a.m. 110 a.m. 205 a.m. just constantly chugging and churning spitting out spitting out back and forth bits of cellular data okay so that led me down this spiral so to speak into the detail use and the detail settings um, how to manage my cellular data usage okay so if you just run with the factory default settings like what my wife has on her 4s you will incur a lot of a lot of data use and you're going to want to monitor that on the my verizon website okay so what i've done and again i can't say this is true for all iphones on all providers this is just my phone with my contract with verizon your mileage may vary um, what i've done or what i've managed to do is just slowly dial back all the smartphone features and all the quote unquote app activity in the background so some key points on that is basically my cellular data usage I've managed to throttle it completely and limit it only to my data monitor and the data monitor app that I downloaded and the Google mapping feature that I use and between those two hey my data my data usage is now totally in check um, and previously out of the box I mean everything on this list was gobbling up data. I mean, stuff that I hadn't even used before. I mean, Passbook? I don't ever use Passbook. Notes? I never used Notes. You know? It, uh, those things were just constant. We're just using up data. The calendar function. I don't use that. I got another calendar function I use if I want to know that. Okay? just So I turned that off. That's the first thing. Second thing in here was I disabled the LTE function. Now, I know that's probably the big selling point for people who need data fast, but that's not me. I don't need data that fast. I'm perfectly fine working off the 3G platform. Secondly, I don't get LTE in my townhouse here in Palo Alto with the foothills nearby. It's basically a dead spot. And with the LTE function engaged, my phone was just 
rampantly searching all hours of the day and night trying to either acquire an LTE um, signal, so to speak, or something to that effect, okay? But on top of that, once I leave my house and I'm on the LTE network, it still uses a whole lot more data than with it off. Okay, so I manually turn off the LTE and I have to manually activate it when I'm working remotely or when I'm remote out of my Wi-Fi and I want to acquire cellular data fast, I manually go in and turn that feature on. Um, let's see, the notification center, I turn most of that off. I, all, all this I mean, stock ticker and today's summary and what the hell, next destination. I don't even know what this stuff is. I don't even want to know what it is. Just turn it off. If I want it, I'll seek it out. But don't just blather it out in front of me. So my notification center is pretty much, pretty much, uh, what you call empty. My calendar day of the week and there you go. Good enough. That's all I, that's all I, that's really all I need. So let's go back to my settings here and kind of scroll through some of the other things I had done. Uh, the general features tab, the software update, uh, no, no, this one, the background app refresh. Definitely I turn that off. Background app refresh. I'll manually do it myself. So I turn that feature off. Um, I think there's a couple more here. In the privacy section, their location services. I limit my location services only to a couple apps. And let's see what those are. The, again, Google Maps and the Text Plus app that I use uh, to communicate with my cousin via text message. But everything, basically everything else, I'm going to have to turn it on kind of manually as I really need to use it. But then again, a lot of the stuff I don't really use that much, like the weather. Okay, I don't use the weather thing. Okay, that's, I don't need that. So um, I might probably activate the, my, the Find My iPhone app here shortly. So I'll probably play around with that in the next day or two. But basically, and my brother-in-law laughs at me for doing this, I've converted my once smartphone into basically a dumb phone by doing this and hey for me that works okay I just don't need all these apps and for me philosophy of use and you can tell that from my home screen my home screen is probably the most empty home screen you, you'll ever see on a smartphone I got my I have Google Maps which I use for the GPS the phone function text messaging and the text plus app and that's good enough for now if I need advanced any advanced features or any advanced apps I flip over my screen to my app page and I'm good to go so um, that's been the learning curve, really. Um, and once I've got that under control, and again, to just, I can't reiterate enough, it's a major difference between the iPhone 4S, my wife's old iPhone 4S, and my new 5C. Okay, even on the same iOS and with the same factory default settings for cellular usage, her phone doesn't have rampant, I guess for lack of a better term, rampant data usage around the clock. Okay, and I suspect it's because mainly because the LTE function. Once I deactivated the LTE function because I don't need it, I'm good to go. Uh, well, I don't need it and I don't have it here physically in my townhouse. So um, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Um, how are we doing on time here? We're at 10 minutes, so we're doing good here with time. Oh, actually, eight minutes. Um, why did I get the silicone rubber <laughs> expensive uh, Apple case? I don't know. No reason. I'm new to the new to you know, smartphones, I figure, oh, what the hell, I'll get it. Um, but it's been surprisingly um, good, a good feature to have. The phone itself is really slick and glossy, and so if you use it, like, to take pic to like take pictures, and it can slip out of your hands if, you're not, if I'm not careful. So um, the silicone texturized feature of the case uh, really helps to keep it planted in my hands, keep it, keeps it planted in my pocket. At the same time, it's not a linty type of silicone. So if you guys have like an otter box or if you have like silicone like watch straps, things like that that just that, that just collect dust and dandruff and all kinds of other particulate, this is different. They managed they've managed to tone down the sticky factor of this whatever silicone that they use and it's got a nice grip feel without you know being a lint magnet so to speak. And it really does I think add a sense of feel, warmth, so to speak, and feel in the hand to the phone and to the device overall. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't want this to sound like an alarm or whatever. Here, I don't want to show you my passcode, but I don't want this to sound like an alarmist type of thing. But I think what I've learned 
on this network with this smartphone. Um, I, I hope other people can use it as well. And again, pay close attention to your, your data, your data usage. Um, oh, for that, um, on the note, I downloaded the new tech uh, data monitor, data monitor, and the green one here in particular is the one for cellular, cellular usage. It basically tallies up the cellular data your phone is using per your billing period. Okay, it's kind of like my sanity check for the My Verizon data, and I kind of use this app at the device to also manage how much data I'm actually using. Okay, so it's pretty accurate. It seems to be pretty accurate. Every now and then it's kind of off a little bit, but for the most part, overall, it's been pretty accurate. So, anyhow, that's it for this review, guys. Um, kind of controversial. I've never actually done a cell phone review before, so we'll see where this goes. I might do follow-up reviews. You'll see me post follow-up reviews if I find some really cool apps and things like that. But at any rate, that's pretty much it for this chapter of the Move OTX channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll catch you later. Oh, actually, I've got some other reviews coming up for my Spyderco Dragonfly. I love this knife, so stay so stay tuned for that. And I've got my uh, the hydration pack a hydration pack review coming up. So take care, guys. I'll see you around. Thanks.